Hello everyone, my name is Marlon Ortiz Alberti, and today I will be speaking on traditional Guatemalan marimba music. As such, we must begin, like any good story, at the very start, with the Mayan people of northern Guatemala and southern Mexico. Now, it is most likely believed that they settled into this area around 3000 BCE to 2500 BCE. And it is not difficult to say that they were a fairly advanced people. Many documents showing that they had a numeric representation for zero in their economy. Uh, the many of their temples were built to map out star systems and specifically to map out planets in their solar systems, such as Mars, Venus, and Mercury in respect to the Earth. And recent evidence would come to show that they had built major roads, such as the Sekeb, that com connect major cities, such as Coba and Yachuna, as well as multiple smaller barrios, or villages, uh, for the sake of trade and transport. This network of roads was likely set up by a once well-renowned Mayan warrior queen, but at this time, her name is still unknown. It is believed that between the years 800 and 925 ACE, many of los primeros, or the first Mayans, were forced to leave major cities such as Chelahu, Goba, Yachuna, y Sacalua for a number of contributing major reasons. But as of this time, it is still unknown which ones were and were not accurate. But it is believed that large-scale deforestation, uh, done so for the sake of expanding these cities, led to the max, the droughts that would then lead to a mass exodus of Los Primeros from their major cities. However, their cultures would continue to spread. And as time went on, um, they would spread further south into the areas that would later be El Salvador, Honduras, and even Nicaragua. Now to you know, spring forward a little bit, um, we're going to touch on the early 1500s. And around this time, the Spaniards landed in the Yucatan Peninsula and began their conquest of the areas that would be Mexico, Guatemala, and many areas of Central America. In this time period, <clears throat> many villages that and barrios of Mayans that were first met by the Spaniards surrendered as they would have no way to combat such a force. And a few, a few others who would have the capabilities um, decided to ally themselves with the Spaniards, such as the Cagchiquils, in order to destroy what would be rival tribes, such as the Quiche. It is in these battles that major heroes and their stories uh, would come to be renowned in Guatemala, such as that of the Uman and the Caibil Balam. And these stories were raised to prominence in the revolutionary period in the 1800s of Mexico and many areas of Central America, including that of the Cunuman, who is recognized very well for his spirit animal, the Quetzal in Guatemala, and the story of how the Quetzal has gained its red trough on its, on its chest um, from the very spear that stabbed the Cunuman, his blood, covered the Quetzal's chest, um, stabbed through by Pedro Alvarado. And it is believed for this reason that the Quetzal, folklore-wise, has a red fluff on its chest. It is most likely that the war was lost because of a destroyed trade route that brought food um, into the Queche opposing force and through many months of starvation were forced to surrender following this the spaniards and the slaves and other things that they would bring with them from around the world would introduce new cultural elements sometimes peaceful and sometimes through force uh, to the mayan people um, things such as the marimba the marimba is most likely to believe to be in instrument indigenous to West Africa and that it spread to Southern Africa. And when the Spaniards took slaves from Southern Africa and from other areas, 
such as Zimbabwe, um, these uh, slaves would bring with them instruments like the marimba. This instrument, when introduced to the Mayans, took hold quite well, and a stylized form was then later built, one that would more or less resemble that of a piano, uh, less than what the original would resemble, which was essentially very similar to a xylophone. Um, other things would be introduced into their culture, such as Christianity, um, this one more so by force, and it would also be the case that uh, many of their original practices, dances, and songs, as well as styles of dress, would be denied to them by the Spaniards, and they would enforce a new way of acting upon them, um, mostly led by their own belief in Christianity and Catholicism, mostly Catholicism. As such, <clears throat> I must now touch a little bit on the cultural aspects of Guatemala that remained and are still remembered to this day. That would be uh, certain things such as their major dances. Um, their dances were uh, important in the sense that they were not only stories, but they were also formed to appease certain gods. Um, so their dances and their music had to have been nearly perfect. If not, it would mean that the god was not pleased by their actions, and it would call upon them to sacrifice a human being um, in order to appease them, typically those who may have done the, da the dance incorrectly, um, in order to follow up with or receive what they had originally desired to receive from dance. Um, later on, certain dances um, would rise out of the Christian beliefs, such as el dance de los sacalocos, sacalcoges, um, and <clears throat> other dances would come from satirizing Spaniards, uh, such as el dance de los pasquerines. Now, oftentimes, for some of the traditional dances that are still practiced at times um, in small villages, um, instruments like the achul or the tambor, uh, tambor would be used. Um, however, it is often the case that more modernly, instruments such as the oboe and saxophone, as well as violin, double bass, bass, would be used instead. Many of the dances and songs that are well recognized um, relate back to these major heroes of folklore, such as El Rey Quiche, Tukunuman, and Kaibil Balam, where they are considered the hero of the story. And oftentimes, the Spaniard and tribes that allied against these heroes are considered evil and satirized. Often it is the case that the tambour and maracas would be used in a temple for four time. And this uh, would most likely be something that was passed to them through the Spaniards, um, since of course the marimba itself was only truly introduced to them thanks to the Spaniards. Um, the marimba, while similar to a xylophone, require, has a level of complexity closer to that of a piano. And as such, it can be difficult at times to, for many to truly master it. The marimba is typically intended to be played by more than a single person, but there are, of course, variations of the marimba that are meant to be played by simply one person. It is typical that the marimba is comprised of a number of wooden planks with string to certain dried gourds, such as pumpkins um, and other such fruits uh, dried out and attached to them. In many of the traditional songs, there is no vocalist or singer because the marimba is meant to essentially be that singing voice. Although in many of the dances, especially in dances like Danza de los Monos, um, there will be people and the very dancers themselves will be making sounds similar to that of animals, or cheering, 
or just sounding off. Um, and in some dances that would be made later on, um, they would be satirizing the speech patterns of the Spaniards. Um, there are many variations on these as there were many barrios and tribes of the Mayan people. Uh, many of their original instruments, that of the achul and the acarina, uh, when used in the traditional song, changes the song from a monophonic texture to a heterophonic texture. This is often the case, and it can be seen quite well in songs, more modern songs, like La Luna de Chelahu, a song that is well recognized um, and often referred to as the second uh, national anthem of Guatemala for how often it is played. Um, it also has, over time, um, been introduced certain instruments, such as chordophones, um, such as the violin, as I said, violin, guitar, and other such items, and even vocals and lyrics have been included in more modern editions of marimba music. Um, when all of this is played together, it often has a heterophonic texture the melody kept by the marimba and the tambur and the many others adding a level of ornamentation entirely unique to their instrument. In this case, I will speak a little bit on the different classifications of the instrument. The marimba, central piece, of course, to the style of music, is an idiophone. The tambur is a membranophone, so it is a drum. The maracas are an idiophone made by placing the seeds of a fruit that has been eaten um, back inside of it, stitching it up and drying it out. Um, the achul is an aerophone and it is a fairly simplistic flute, woodwind flute. Now, more modern instruments would be certain chordophones, such as the guitar, violin, and so forth, um, seen in more modern examples of Guatemalan marimba music. There would also often be percussion drum sets nowadays and um, simply for ease of access, I assume, and for the wider range of sounds. Um, but at times you will also find uh, drums that are similar to that of a bongo, membranophones, more like bongos. And in terms of aerophones, um, oftentimes now, oboes and saxophones replace many of those traditional instruments. And now we'll get into the video portion. Now, the first video will be able to touch a little bit on different dances of the Guatemalan people. The following video will touch on one of the more major songs uh, recognized known as El Rey Quiche. Um, once again, based upon a folklore, folklore and story of a great king, the Quiche people, people who sided against the Spaniards. And finally, we close out with one of the most well-known, more modern songs made in 1944, um, known as La Luna de Chelahu, made by Paco Perez. As can be seen here, um, oftentimes, um, those that dance will have very beautiful and very highly ordained clothes. Um, and it is often the case that they will have a style of headdress as well. Um, in this case, it, you know, it's a different take upon it, but at times they will also have, such as in El Danza de los Conquistadores, a headdress that more closely resembles that of warriors, um, often carrying the plumage of certain birds, such as the Quetzal. This tower here is actually part of a different dance that I had to go on earlier, called the Danza de los Monos. This here is the story, uh, the song that plays for El Rey Quiche, played here by the individual wearing the very large headdress and very sizable cape. Notice here the use of other instruments such as the saxophone and oboe.
as you notice here, where the marimba is playing by itself, it carries a monophonic texture. However, when the saxophone and oboe play in, it carries a heterophonic texture. This song here is a very well recognized song in its own right. To touch a little bit on the last song, La Luna de Chalahu is a song that is based upon the city of Chalahu. Uh, Chalahu being the Quiche name for it, the name that it is now recognized by instead is uh, Huehuetenango. Um, however, the song is essentially related to um, the fact that the city of Chalahu is a, a top of a mountain and so far up that the moon oftentimes at night is said to be gigantic, almost nearly as large as the sun is in the day. And it is for this reason that not only is the city often very, very high in tourism, um, but is also so very beloved by those of Guatemala and especially by those that live inside of the city of Corvetenango. Um, and that song itself, once again, um, is played often and often covered by many different um, Guatemalan singers. Uh, in some cases, it is uh, played with more instruments. And in some cases, instead of the marimba, it is played by, with a guitar. But that is of note for another time. And now, finally, I will touch a little bit on the musical elements found in traditional and modern marimba music. It is often the case that both in traditional and in more modern, um, the timbre of the music um, is very warm, very mellow, and has a very high richness to it. And this is often accented, uh, accented um, by the aerophones that are introduced, um, giving it a much deeper timbre. Um, the music is often very soothing, very calm. Um, it is also often the case that the texture of traditional uh, marimba music is closer to monophonic. However, at times um, when certain instruments such as the uh, achu, the flute, uh, the traditional flute is played alongside the marimba, the song takes on a heterophonic texture where the melody is kept by the marimba, the tempo kept by the tambur and the maracas and the flute adding on top of the melody its own slight ornamentation, keeping in line the marimba's original melody, as the marimba is meant to shine in this style of music, as it does on its own entirely by its timbre. It is also shown to, it shines very well in this types of music, um, thanks in, in part to its melodic contour, oftentimes entirely controlled by the marimba. Um, and it is also the case that oftentimes both traditional and modern marimba music carries a 4-4 four, four tempo. Once again, most likely brought into um, the Mayan people and shown to them through uh, Spaniard songs. And so you can see here the large number of influences upon uh, traditional Guatemalan marimba music. Um, it has a number of influences, not only from Spanish, uh, but also African. Um, and it, as time has gone on, even English instruments. And it has grown a lot, but it always seems to retain a, 
certain aspects to itself, such as its timbre and texture, uh, that truly set itself apart. Um, with this, I would like to say that uh, I did really enjoy the style of music. Um, it is very calm, far different from what I typically enjoy, but very nice. Something that I had never listened to before uh, taking this class. So with this, I end upon my works cited page, um, a number of links here, and I will be linking uh, it as a Word document afterwards as well. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation on Guatemalan Marimba music. And I thank you as well for taking the time to watch this video once more.